Thank you. Um, so there will be no slides, just the editor and the Elixir shell. And uh, I'm super excited to be here. So you might hear that in my voice. I hope not too much. Uh, so uh, as Sasha Yurich pointed out in his uh, keynote today, clarity is super important uh, in our source code, as it's a means of communication between people too, not just uh, a person and the machine. So I will try to use types to give some more clarity uh, to the message passing API of our processes in Elixir. And uh, I think that Dialyzer has paved the way to use types and specs in the Erlang and Elixir ecosystem. Uh, but sometimes we feel that it's, it's a bit clunky. So maybe we can use the types and specs to uh, give us more feedback and more information about our code and also to communicate more clearly to other people. So on the left hand side, I have a demo module, uh, a demo gen server, which uses some uh, type and spec annotations. And uh, what I want to do is to define, declare that this gen server is going to uh, accept messages of this type. So a contract echo request and a contract hello request. And I'm going to use a tool called Gradualizer that uh, is uh, developed by uh, Josef Svenningson and that we, uh, I together with uh, Promek uh, Wojtasik, a colleague from the Erlang Solutions office uh, in Krakow, uh, have developed to make it possible to use Gradualizer with Elixir, because Gradualizer is originally an Erlang uh, tool. So I have an Elixir shell running on the right. Uh, I'll copy this snippet. And let's see what we have. Uh, when we run it on this module. So far, so good. It's OK. So let's go step by step and uh, change this definition not to include a uh, contract hello request. There is only one request in the type right now. Let's rerun this and see uh, what we get. And it says that on line 62, there is a clause that cannot be reached. So let's check line 62 and see what that is. Uh, it's a handle function clause for a message of uh, with a, the hello tag. So OK, we do not declare this kind of request in our type now. And we get a warning that uh, this clause is basically dead code. So OK, let's remove that, or at least uh, comment it out. And let's see what happens now. Good, back to normal. So let's see when we change the type definition to the original one, the one we started with. And uh, run the type checker again on that. And we get feedback that we have non-exhaustive patterns on line 56. So uh, this type checker gives us exhaustiveness checking like uh, in languages like Elm or Haskell or PureScript. So these uh, statically typed programming languages uh, that we know. And we also get an example value that we are not uh, handling the hello uh, type of message. That's in Erlang syntax for now, but uh, all of this is pretty experimental. So uh, bits like this are not yet handled. Uh, completely properly. So uh, let's implement this uh, function again. And let's see uh, what we get. OK, back to normal, all good. So we get feedback for dead code, and we get feedback for uh, missing uh, implementations. What else can we get from this? For example, let's say uh, I was uh, sloppy implementing one of the handlers. And uh, I made a typo in the message tag. Let's see how that looks. The pattern, blah, blah, on line 56 doesn't have the type message. And indeed, it doesn't. It wouldn't match at runtime. But we get this feedback now at check time. So OK, let's fix that. And again, back to normal. Everything is fine. So. Um, 
So far, we have looked at the request handling side of the Gen server. And we do get some useful information from Gradualizer about the state of our code in the context of what we declare about our code. So can we do something on the other uh, end? Like, uh, can we use Gradualizer to help us with the responses that we get from, from the Gen server? And yes, we, we can to some extent. But uh, it's important to note at this point that Gen server call has this type signature. So the thing it returns is just a term. That's the most general type for anything that we might, uh, that we might type in Elixir. So uh, in order to uh, let Gradualizer help us, we have to help it and provide some more type information. And this is something that we do uh, with uh, a macro call like annotate type. So with your usual gen server call, uh, with the PID of the process, with the specific request type, but then we provide the type uh, of the response for this request. And Gradualizer does not type check message passing uh, itself. So this little thing, this, this part is on us, on me as a programmer, to know that for this request, it's this type that's going to be um, returned. And thanks to that, we can then use Gradualizer in this uh, case uh, statement and rely on this exhaustiveness checking. So if this type, uh, if this echo result uh, type had more clauses, had more variants, we could type check on that, and we would get uh, the warning that, hey, you're not uh, implementing a clause for this variant. Uh, we can also rely on it uh, to check if uh, the message tags are correct. So if, if we do a silly mistake like this again, we will get uh, some feedback on that. And uh, and there's one more way uh, to specify the type of such a message. So if this feels too heavyweight uh, in this particular line, if the annotate type macro is not something that we like, we can provide this information by defining an uh, external function. Uh, so this is completely equivalent to, um, to Gradualizer, and it will also uh, allow us to type check this code. So uh, we can see that by using uh, type specs and by using Gradualizer, we can get uh, important feedback about our code, and we can improve the clarity of the message passing interface of our processes uh, and get this feedback way sooner than after running a CI build uh, or uh, running the test, because we get that at compile time. We can also see that Gradualizer type checks uh, way faster than Dialyzer does, so this is also an uh, Mm, well, a good point. And uh, Kevin Hoffman having a talk in the other room about using Wasm and Rust and uh, Elixir said that people used to strong and static typing, uh, for example, with a Rust background, are kind of uh, are freaked out about programming Elixir because of no like the lack of the safety net of types. So using techniques like this, we can recover uh, this safety network, uh, but we don't have to use that in every place. We can uh, quite gradually or quite, quite fluently um, switch between completely dynamically typed code and code which uses type specs when we need this extra level of uh, confidence. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, if you're interested in this approach, you can check out this example on GitHub. The link is on the mm, bottom right. Or uh, you can send me a message with some feedback about this on Twitter or via email. Uh, that's it, and thank you.